Yes. I was wondering earlier you said that you nearly uh, started rolling Naruto. Yeah. Uh, Orochimaru. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I would have been good. <laughs> Do a voice. <laughs> I wish I had a microphone. Is there a mic in here? Uh, I could go get it. <laughs> Run! Run! Where's the Run! Um, well, here's, here's, the, here's the story, you guys. Um, the two co-directors of Naruto contacted me one day and said, there's this character coming up I think you'd be really good for. I don't know. It's kind of androgynous. <laughs> Wait a minute. You guys, it's not typecasting. It has nothing to do with me. I'm not androgynous. But I have a higher, lighter tone. And, you know, there are many women who have deeper, darker voices. And so that mid-range in there... Well, you don't sound like a guy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and if you soften your tone a little bit, you maybe you're a girl, maybe you're not. I mean, I've certainly talked with people on the phone before. Hello, ma'am. No, I'm a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you're selling, you just lost the sale. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they said, I think you'd, I think you'd be good for this. Um, we want you to record a, an audition for it. So they sent me this audition side, and I remember a lot of it, actually about the scroll of the heavens and stuff, and earth scroll, and, and uh, so I recorded it, and at the time I didn't even know much about the character, who he was, or how he played into the show. Um, the, the bottom line was that they don't make the ultimate decisions on big shows like that. The Japanese do. The company that owns the license, basically the directors send all the auditions to the Japanese, and they decide who they want to play the roles. And so, um, they chose somebody else. Uh, I, was, I was the director's choice. They really wanted me to play that role. They really wanted me to have it. And it was right after Full Metal, you guys, and I would've, uh, would've been really neat. But you know what the good part is? My good friend Steve Bloom is playing the role, and I, I can't think of anybody I would rather play it than him, because I love him to death. He and I are really good friends, and I'm very glad that he's doing it. But you know, it's funny, I mean, it's, very, it's pretty much, I mean, the same as I would have done it. It's, you know, he's, he's kind of slithery, he's kind of snake, you know, snake-like. And... <laughs> so his voice was very... I see you already possess the scroll of the heavens. Oh, so. <laughs> I suppose you'd like to possess my earth scroll as well. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Take it from me. <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> Anyway, it would have been fun. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was over at Steve's house one night. I was out recording in L.A. and I was staying at his house. And we were in his pool and had cigars. And we're like, <laughs> we're leaned up against the, the, bat, the side of the pool and we're smoking our cigars. And I, we hadn't talked about Orochimaru at all. Because he was the one that called me. He goes, dude, have you heard from the studio? I'm like, no. And he goes, they cast me in that role. I mean, he felt really bad. And he's a great guy. And I'm like, well, dude, there's nobody I would rather play it than you. And uh, so we hadn't talked about it. And it's like months later, we're sitting in the pool, smoking <laughs> the cigars. And, and I look at him and I go, I just have to ask, what does your Orochimaru sound like? <laughs> and he looked at me, he put, he put his arm around my shoulder and he goes, Pretty much just like yours did. <laughs> so uh, anyway, but I'm still hopeful uh, to get the chance to be a part of that show. Um, it's a big show. Lo I mean, it's a long show. There are lots of characters. Yeah, really. There are lots of characters coming up, and uh, and I've certainly expressed my interest uh, in in being a part of it. Not because it's any money making thing, just to be a part of it. Because I have a lot of friends that are in it, and I like the show, and would love to be a part of it. Question. Anyone else? You asked already. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had originally heard a rumor when Bleach was first being dubbed that you were supposed to be cast as Hitsugaya. I oh no. No, see movie. that's see that's one of those kind of rumors that fans start because who played Hitsugaya in Japanese? Uh, oh. yes. Romy Park. Yeah. You know what else she played? 
oh. Edward Elric. Mm -hmm. So fans thought, oh, he's going to play Utsu Gaia. Mm -hmm. No. They had already cast. In fact, you want to hear something funny? When I found out that Romy had been in this show, I called the producers and I said, hey, I would love to read for Itsu Gaia. And the guy was like, okay, sure. When the character comes up, I'll have, uh, sure, you can read for him. The, he didn't even realize that they had already cast him. <laughs> like there's so many characters, you know what I mean? That, that they, they just didn't even, he didn't even realize that they'd already cast that role. And so, um, but you know what? I gotta say, I love Ikaku. <laughs> Ikaku Madarame is the shiznit. <laughs> I love him. I, you know what I love about him? He doesn't sound like me. He doesn't sound like Ed. He doesn't sound like a, a, a teenage kid. And it, you know what? One of my favorite compliments from fans is, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that was you. I saw the credits roll. I'm like, what? <laughs> There's Vic's name, but I didn't, hear, I didn't hear him. I love that. And I got that from the first several episodes of Bleach when Ikaku showed up. Like, oh my gosh, it doesn't sound like you. That's fun. It's fun to play characters like that. Question? Yes? Uh, you mentioned film degree. I was curious if you had a sort of like something you concentrated on, or just kind of like a general. It was a general cinema degree. We did everything. I mean, back in those days, we were shooting, we'd go out and shoot projects on 16 millimeter cameras and develop our own film and tape splice it or hot splice it together on movieolas. You guys know what a movieola is? Who knows what a movieola is? That's one of those old things you see. <laughs> exactly. That's one of those old timey things that has reels and you hand crank them and the film goes through a little viewer. And you watch the film like this and you find the frame right where you want it. And then you pull it out, grease pencil. I mean old time. I mean, <laughs> Nobody does that hardly anymore. <laughs> but um, we would shoot our own projects. So, I mean, sound, set, building, uh, editing, camera, shooting projects. I mean, it was kind of a general cinematography degree. Yes, somebody else? Yeah, I heard on YouTube the other day that he was once a cop. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it was on YouTube, it must, it must be true. <laughs> yes, actually. Um, my mom was really good friends with the chief of police in the town that she lives in, Ocean City, Maryland, right on the beach in Maryland. It's a beautiful vacation town. That's a, it's, a summer, it's a summer uh, vacation town. <clears throat> and my mom lived there, and uh, she was good friends with the chief of police, and she was, oh, and mom. My mom, being a mom, she's like, my son is a fine upstanding boy. He never gets in trouble and, you know, he's a clean cut young man. He doesn't swear and he doesn't drink and he's a good guy. And so, of course, the chief of police is like, well, hey, I'd love to have someone like that on the force. <laughs> <laughs> so when I graduated from college, my mom's like, hey, you know, if you don't have anything like lined up right now, you should, you should do this. And I thought... Being a theater major, my, uh, by the way, film degree, film major, theater minor. Mm -hmm. So I minored in theater. So I'm like, ooh, that sounds very theatrical. <laughs> <laughs> Being a police officer could be quite fun. So uh, I went back and I did it for like a year and a half, almost two years. But what was funny was I really enjoyed the police part of it. Like, you know, wearing a uniform and being out among the people and like, you know, busting people for like doing drugs in their car and, <laughs> you know, police stuff. That was fun. But then a year into my, my police, my, a year into my time as a police officer, the police department found out that I had a degree in film. <laughs> and they wanted to do, they wanted to start doing a series of public safety commercials. <laughs> So guess who they chose? <laughs> Here's me. And you know what? I had to do the whole thing, y'all. I had to do the whole thing. I had to take the camera out, set it up, shoot them, edit them, and I'd be in them. So like I would set the shot up. Here's like, here's my squad car. And I'd set the shot up and I'd lock it down and then I'd go out in front of it and I'd stand there. <laughs> 